So let's talk about the easy, easiest one first, which is dry bulb. Okay. So dry bulb is easily shown with a conventional dry bulb thermometer, right? We've all seen this. The dry bulb is the temperature typically reported in the news. It's 17, 18 degrees outside here. I don't know what it is there. That's the dry bulb temperature. The dry bulb temperature is completely independent of the moisture in the air. It's totally based on sensible. It doesn't care about the moisture. Okay. And I'll tell you why it's called dry bulb here in a second. Okay. The next property of air we're going to look at is what's called wet bulb. Okay. And we're going to show that by looking at something. Does anybody know what this is? Anyone in the room? No one's ever seen one of these? Okay, so this is called a sling psychrometer. Okay, it's used to measure wet bulb and compare it to dry bulb. Not many people use this anymore today. Most will use something like this. But this is actually extremely accurate and it's a good way to show wet bulb because it's got a wet bulb thermometer and a dry bulb thermometer. So, both these thermometers in here are identical except for one thing. See this cotton wick on top of this dry bulb? Okay, on top of this bulb. We're gonna put water on that and we're gonna wet it. Now, what happens when water evaporates from the wick? Do you think the temperature in this thermometer is gonna drop or gonna go up? It's gonna drop. What happens when the air is really dry and you get more evaporation? It drops more, right? So the drier the air, the more evaporation off this wick, the lower the dry bulb, the wet bulb temperature, excuse me. Okay, so the wet bulb temperature will always be lower than the dry bulb temperature, as far as I know, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and wet this. Got some water here. And I'm gonna sling this thing around. I think you're supposed to sling it around for 20 seconds. This actually is one of the few things that survived the flood, so I hope it still works. This cotton thing's coming off, so I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna sling this thing around without hitting myself. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Okay, so I'm not sure how well that worked. It is a little bit lower. It's about, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but you can see it a little bit. So it's about five degrees lower on the wet bulb thermometer. You see that? This wick's kind of funky. I need to get a new wick, but okay. So the drier the air, the lower the wet bulb, that's important. All right. Next, we're going to talk about relative humidity. And to do that, we're going to use these beakers here, which are going to represent specific conditions of the air. Okay. So the relative humidity is the amount of moisture in the air compared to how much it can hold at a specific condition. All right. So let's say we have a volume of air at 55 degrees. All right. We heat that up to 75 degrees. You would expect that the volume would increase, right? And then we take that same volume of air, we heat it up to 95 degrees. Okay. So again, relative humidity is the amount of water in the air versus how much it could hold at that condition. So if we were to represent 50% relative humidity in these conditions, how much water would I put in these beakers? Any guesses? How much would I fill it up? Third of the way, halfway, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try and do that. Get as close as I can without making a big mess here. 
Mm, I think that's about half. And the point here we're going to get to is why using RH is really not a very good indicator of how much moisture is in there. Okay, so I think those are close enough. All right. So each of these conditions represents 50% relative humidity. 55 degree dry bulb, 50%. 75 degree dry bulb, 50%, 95 degree dry bulb, 50%, okay? What do you notice about the amount of moisture here versus here? Well, pretty obvious. There's a ton more moisture here, right? And therein lies the issue with using relative humidity as an indicator of how much moisture is in the air, okay? Because it's relative to the dry bulb. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now, what happens if we were to take this quantity of water, this air condition at 75 degrees, oops, camera's over here, and immediately cool it down to 55, what would happen? We'd get, yeah, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to make a big mess here, but if I was to fill the rest of this in here, it would overpour, so we get Condensation, I heard it said there. We get fog, we get whatever. We get saturated air, can't hold any more water in the air. Okay, any questions on relative humidity? Make sense? Okay. Let me dump these back in here real quick. I did this live the first time on LinkedIn a few months ago, it was terrifying. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is humidity, okay? So humidity is the physical amount of moisture in the air at a given condition. In our world, we talk in grains per pounds of dry air. Has, ever, has anyone heard of grains? You all know what grains are, right? Everybody's pretty much heard of that. So a grain technically is one seven thousandth of a pound. So it's a very small value. It's used today in other industries. It's used to measure ammo. It's used to measure arrows. It's used to measure really small pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. So to give you an idea, a hundred grains, I got a little scale here, which actually has grains on it. Okay. Let me zero this out. So I'm going to zero this out, and I'm going to show you what 100 grains looks like using this. Almost there. All right. That's close enough. It's pretty darn close. So that is what 100 grains of moisture looks like per pound of dry air is how we, we do it in our world, right? So per pound of dry air. So what does a pound of dry air look like? Let me move this over here. So I believe 12 cubic feet is a pound of dry air. I should have had that written down, I forgot. Anyway, this represents almost that volume. So. Picture a little bit more than this as a pound of dry air. If it was 100 grains, which is a pretty humid day, there would be that much water in that amount of air. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, the last thing, property of air we have is humidity. So whereas relative humidity is relative to the dry bulb, Humidity is just, you know, what we just talked about. It's the grains. It's the physical amount of moisture in the air. So, turn my machine on here. Okay, so, dew point is the last thing we got to talk about, okay? So, the dew point in this office right now if you could see the bottom number, 42.4, okay? So the dew point is the point at which condensation will occur. 
Okay, so any surface colder than 42.4 is going to condense water on it. Now I have a couple things here. I don't know how warm they are now, so we might not see anything, but let's see. This one looks still cold enough. Okay, so if we take this here, which is an infrared thermometer, and we zap these surfaces, this can is 63, 60 ish or 63 degrees, right? I don't know if you could see that. What's it reading there? 57? 56? Right. So the dew point in here is 42, so you would not expect it to have condensation on it, which it doesn't. Okay. This igloo pack I just took out of the freezer is 37-ish degrees. For some reason, it's colder when I turn it around. I don't know why, but anyway, so it's 35 something degrees, something like that. And you would expect this to condense water and it does have a lot of water on it. I don't know how well you could see it or not, but. Okay, so that's dew point. That's important to know because that's how we remove moisture from the air is we create surfaces colder than the dew point of the air and we condense water. And if everything's working right, the cooling coil drains the water in the drain pan and we remove it from the building. That's how we get water out of the building. Okay.